On the count of three, two, one, go! Hello and welcome to another episode of Crit Corner. Today we're at the British Columbia Criterium Championships at the Legislature Grounds in British Columbia. We're going to do a quick lap of the course here right off the gun. You can see it is high pace. People want to win. So you can see that first corner we come off the waterfront there, make a right hand turn onto a bit of a climb here. Might not seem like much and if you can carry speed you don't have to work too much going into it. But trust me by the end of the race you will be feeling a rise like this into the second corner this one's not too bad a little rough you can play around with your lines on it lots though be have to be really aware though on this stretch about how rough it is there's a construction site on the left hand side and they seem to have done some damage to the road surface so picking lines along this dead straightaway is actually really important this corner that we're about to go into is definitely the most technical corner on the course very demanding and if you're on the wrong wheel you're gonna lose time you're gonna lose space here so it's really important to a know the right wheels to follow and b uh, know how to take that corner fast because it's gonna save you a tremendous amount of energy and speed later on in the race now this last bit is really just a setup for the sprint it's not a long distance from the final corner into the finish line so anytime you're going for a preem or for that final sprint you really have to be leading the race almost at this point here is where you're launching that sprint. This corner itself is very forgiving, nothing too challenging about it. You can take lots of speed through there, but because you're carrying so much momentum, getting to the finish line almost right away, it's really important to be on the ball. All right, let's talk a little bit about the team situation, the tactics that are going to result. There are three big teams out here today. First of all, Russ Hayes. They have got some great crit racers, former provincial champs, uh, guys who can really go for it. And uh, I think pretty sure based on the firepower that they have, they're gonna be going for the sprint today. And so they're gonna be covering a lot of the moves. The next big team on display here is Trek Red Truck, one of them right in front of me there. Probably more likely to win out of a break today. Still, uh, still hosting some great firepower on the team. Uh, but if you can get in a breakaway with one of these guys, they're going to want to work because getting trapped with Russ Hayes means less likes likely to sprint win. Russ Hayes, on the other hand, is likely going to be chasing these guys down very aggressively. The third big team, my team, Langua Brown Racing, we've got a couple things uh, we can do. Big important for us is to understand that Russ Hayes is going to be doing a lot of chasing and so let them chase uh, when, when it suits us. Um, but two, to make sure that we're not out of any breaks. So we gotta be throwing our guys out at these attacks by all these different riders from either the Russ Hayes, Trek Red Truck, Tag Cycling, Giant Langley, all those other, other teams, we're gonna be starting to instigate breaks. We can't miss them. So what is my role in all of this? Well, besides being pack fill, um, I'm gonna be charged with bringing back attacks and more specifically bridging up to them. So it's hard to tell here, but I've just put on a few watts, opened up a bit of a gap on the field, and I'm trying to get up to this uh, Victoria Wheelers guy and Dylan Davies. Dylan Davies is a big threat when he's off the front solo. He's got a big engine and can motor himself away all on his own for a very long time. So. Despite the fact that Russ Hayes may very well have chased him down on their own, it's not something I want to risk, and even better is since I've got a gap in the field here, I could be with him, and uh, that's someone who's great to work with. Well, we got caught. Um, I didn't quite make it up to Dylan before the pack caught me, but I was out there for a while, and now I, this is an example of leveraging opportunities to recover. So this corner, I had a faster line through there, and what that really means is that I don't have to sprint when everyone else is doing that to catch up to the field. I can let a few guys go back past me, slot back in behind them and enjoy the ride. All right, so here's a good bit of setup. There's been an attack up the front. As we come through the corner, Russ Hayes is gonna follow and Jeff is gonna be right on his wheel. I was on Jeff's wheel and I'm just gonna let that go. Just sit up a little bit, not so much that it's obvious or I'm in the way, but you know, any amount of pause is going to cause that gap to explode open. And so you can see now I'm forcing uh, Trek Red Truck to do the work. I'm forcing someone else to follow him. And I've now had two wheels opportunity to accelerate back up to speed. That's work that I didn't have to do while also giving my teammate an advantage. Okay, this will be an interesting lap to watch. Trek Red Truck and Russ Hayes have been throwing punches at each other for the last lap, two laps. You can see Dylan Davies going on another attack here. Cody Canning is following him right on his wheel. And I'm just going to be the beneficiary of those. What my aim is, is I know that one or the other, Russ Hayes or Trek Red Truck, is going to chase the other down anytime they attack. And I'm hoping to just be on the back end of that and get off the front as a result of their work, nothing on my own. But I also know it's a preem lap. And so by being a little bit lazy, I've saved a bit of energy. 
and slot right back in at the front because this is where you need to be if you want to try and win a preem. So remember what I said about how early you have to go for this for this sprint. Follow the Victoria Wheelers guy, and I, in my opinion, I think that's too early. I don't think I could hold that to the line, but I also can't get around him at this point. I'm not willing to risk it to get around him at this point. I think I can get him through the corner, though. So watch here. He's going to go narrow, and I'm going to go wide. Going wide for me lets me maintain a little bit more momentum and start my acceleration out of the corner much earlier. Unfortunately, in this case, it wasn't early enough, and I think it really goes to show that this is a course, and that sprint particularly, you want to be the first wheel coming out of that corner, and in order to be that, you need to be the first wheel going into it. So you have to sprint early if you want to win. But the preem does not represent the end of the race, and it is in fact a perfect opportunity to take advantage of. So there goes Jeff. He is going to use the fact that the field has been going very hard for a lap, is really stretched out, probably has a couple splits forming, uh, to open up a big gap on the field and force and hopefully force a breakaway as a result. So I can pinpoint almost the exact moment that I screwed up this race. Nigel here does this move, starts to regain some wheels. I start to follow him, but not aggressively enough, and he opens up a bit of a split, and the hole in the field is going to get filled by someone. I'm not taking nearly enough advantage of it, and it's gone. Two screw up on my part. One, other people are going to want Nigel's wheel. He's a very strong racer. That's a good wheel to protect. Don't give it away like I just did. Two, late in a race like this, when we're getting really close to the sprint, the pace is going to be really high. Everyone else is going to be on nerves. So moving up is very challenging. So when an opportunity presents itself, that you need to be there to take advantage of it so you can regain wheels when it's easier rather than waiting even later when it's going to be even harder. We're basically at the end of the race here. I'm sitting up, just letting myself coast through to whatever position. I'll probably put a little bit of a dig into the line. I do wish I'd caught it. Russ Hayes sprinted, uh, led themselves out one, two, three, uh, swept the podium. Cody Canning took the jersey. Uh, our own rider, Jackson Pickle, got six. So we weren't totally out, but not quite where we wanted to be. It's a really fun race in a really spectacular setting right in front of the provincial legislature like that on the waterfront, downtown Victoria, really cool. Big thank you to John Watkin for putting it on every year. Uh, looking forward to next year again. And uh, thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoyed it. Again, I hope you learned something. If there's something else you'd want me to explore, please let me know. And uh, also let me know if you enjoyed it. Thank you.